Welcome to the Certified Geo Exchange Designer, an introduction course. My name is Jim Bowes. I work for Oklahoma State University. I serve as Executive Director of the International Ground Source Heat Pump Association and also uh, work with the Geothermal Heat Pump Consortium and AEE, which is the Association of Energy Engineers. And these groups are responsible for this training program. Our first slide here is a geo exchange uh, system that's been installed in a, a uh, border town casino between Missouri and, uh, and Oklahoma. Uh, this has been a very successful project. Uh, it is part of our uh, magazine geo uh, outlook which uh, is available to members and so if, if you want to get this magazine that's one way of getting it. If not, we'll, I'm sure we could make it available to you at, a, at an increased price. But we are quite proud of this magazine because it is uh, is very geo-oriented, and uh, if that's what you want to do is be in this business, then you ought to become involved with ICSPA and these other associations that I talk about. Uh, we do have a solar system. It is a renewable energy technology. The energy that uh, is stored in the surface of the Earth comes from the sun. Uh, that energy is uh, bounced off by, by clouds and vapor and dust in, in the atmosphere and things like that, but 46% uh, of that energy that comes from the sun is absorbed uh, by the ground and is, store, is stored in the surface uh, and depends on the depth of what that temperature of, of that solar energy would be. So we can bury pipes at any, any depth uh, from the surface uh, uh, depending upon uh, what the geological uh, considerations might be. If you've got a lot of rock you may not want to think about uh, trenching in the surface but uh, you can always drill through the rock and so this is the technology. Uh, it's been estimated by some people that there's about 200 times more energy in the surface of the earth than humankind ever needs, so uh, there's plenty of energy there. It is renewable as long as the sun keeps shining, and uh, it is not as high a temperature that can be used directly uh, other than by animals who live underground, and this seems to be uh, acceptable to them, but we like it a little bit warmer and a little bit cooler in our residences than what the animals are put up with, and so what we're going to do is we're going to bury a plastic pipe in the ground and we're going to let the earth uh, heat the solution that we circulate through that plastic pipe. Give you some idea of what uh, kind of pipe we're talking about. I have a piece of uh, heat exchanger pipe right here uh, that uh, is a, a common size. This is three quarter inch pipe. It's high density polyethylene and we use a lot of this pipe in the ground. Uh, we heat fuse a, the, the pipe together. You can see a socket fitting here in this case and that's been fused to a piece of pipe here and so everything that goes underground is plastic and uh, has a long life. The particular pipe has a old warranted life of 20 to 50 years. Uh, people will say it has an expected life of 200 years so you don't have to worry about uh, whether this pipe is going to last or not. Uh, the earth, earth is, a, is a solar battery absorbing this energy and, and so it's just there for, our, for the taking and whether we're going to put it in the ground at four feet or five feet or we're going to drill vertical boreholes 200 feet uh, down to 1500 feet to 2500 feet. It all depends on economics and, and if the design is driven by economics. Emotion is fine for your first one but after you put one in your house you know you want to make a living it should be based on economics because if you oversize it or overbuild it uh, you're going to be pricing yourself out of the business. If you under design it and it doesn't work right then People are going to come talking to you when you when you least want them around. We not like to talk a little bit about load to source efficiencies. In other words, just how good is this system and what kind of performance can we expect? I've listed here uh, four different kind of systems that we want to talk briefly about. Uh, we know we know how good the thing is, but we want to have some basis by which uh, we can make these comparisons. Uh, the first one is a gas and electric HVAC system, a very common type of system. And on the diagram you can see here is that we have uh, a fan energy and furnace energy. And the fan energy uh, is going to come from our converting uh, uh, power plant energy, which may comes from fossil fuel, maybe gas, maybe oil, maybe any number of sources. Uh, 
uh, and we want to talk about not 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 overly uh, get concerned about this generation transmission losses, but those are the things that have to be accounted for uh, whenever we want to look at the overall system performance. And we see there on the upper right hand corner up there where it says load. In this particular case, we want to deliver 10 kilowatt hours of thermal energy, and we're looking over there on the the left hand side, right uh, to the left of that dotted red line, that the source is going to take about 14.6 kilowatt hours of thermal energy, which could be natural gas, uh, to, to deliver 10 uh, kilowatt hours of thermal to the load. Uh, you can see generating transmission losses at the power plant, uh, which uh, can get up to 70 percent, and then you can see natural gas distribution losses of about 10 percent. So uh, you, you can go over these numbers. Uh, if, if you don't uh, like the numbers which uh, we show it, a little later on where you can adjust the numbers, but by and large, this will not be too far off the, from what we what we see in the field. And so uh, we're, we're not picking on anybody's particular system, we're just wanting to say that the, the ground source heat pump system has a thermodynamic advantage and, and we want to take care of that because that's going to deliver a savings to the customer and without it delivering a savings to the customer, there's not really much uh, a use in going any further. There are comfort conditions or comfort considerations. Uh, you know, I live in a home with one of these, and uh, you know, you're, I'm the last guy to talk to it about it if you think there's something bad about it, because I'm I'm very biased about this technology. After about 20, 25 years in it, you know, there must be something about it that that I would like. Uh, air source heat pumps are a common electric uh, system out there. We see that uh, to deliver that load of, of 10 kilowatt hours. Uh, we're going to have to start off with about 17. Uh, we're going to lose uh, about 12 kilowatt hours of, of, of thermal energy at the power plant. I mean, it's going up the stack, going into the cooling tower, or going into a cooling pond. And from that 17 uh, kilowatt hours that we have there, well, taking into account generation transmission losses, then we're going to end up with about 5 kilowatt hours of electric. With a COP of 2, which we can expect from an air source heat pump, in a lot of what I would call moderate climates, uh, not not extremely cold climates, but uh, in southern southern states, uh, we should be able to get to even with the defrost losses and other losses that you have in air source heat pumps. With COP of two, then we should take that five kilowatt hours of, of electric energy, and we should be able to and can, in a lot of cases, deliver ten kilowatt hours of, of thermal energy. So we deliver ten. We we started out with seventeen. Now we start to getting into what's uh, near and dear to my heart and a bunch of other people in this country, and that's ground source heat pumps. Here we show a, a load of 10 kilowatt hours thermal, and on the left-hand side we show a source of nine, which means now that after the generation and transmission losses are taken into account with the ground source heat pump with a COP of 3.7, uh, we're now delivering more thermal energy to the load. And one way of, of saying this is that we are able to recover from the ground more energy than we lost in transmission generation uh, by absorbing that heat from the ground by the heat pump and then delivering that to the load. So now uh, you can say that, well, some people say, well, this is more than 100% efficiency. No engineer in his right mind would ever talk about efficiencies greater than 100%. You can't even get to 100% because of, uh, of uh, the rules of thermodynamics, which we're all saddled with. So now we're, the load to, to source is going to be greater than one, and we're heading in the right track. Uh, advanced ground source heat pumps, uh, we, we have those out there now. Uh, and what is different about an advanced ground source heat pump and, uh, and a regular heat pump is not anything in the heat pump. It has to do with how the power is generated. And in this case, it's a natural gas combined cycle a power plant, and you start out with six kilowatt hours of thermal and you should be able to deliver 10 kilowatt hours of uh, thermal energy which means now that uh, the generation efficiency that gave us that was about 55 percent compared with 35 percent for a steam cycle alone so uh, now now we're talking about some some real energy savings 